so now looking ahead and looking at your career, we've talked about teaching and coaching. What are some of the goals that you have now moving forward? And what does that future ideally look like in your mind? I think in terms of career pathways is trying to help people that maybe were in my situation or that um, also want to go through maybe my route, you know, that I've, you know, whether it's a student athlete, just a student, just an athlete. So it's just really transmitting what I've learned over the years and being able to give them kind of the opportunities and, and just maybe experience, share my experiences so that they can go and choose their own pathways and, and hopefully take in a bit of what I said and help them with uh, to be successful. So it's in teaching, it would be, you know, to like teach kids that maybe don't have as much opportunities, uh, resources, financial resources, uh, family support, um, and give them the tools that maybe are necessary for them to, you know, not be afraid to push past their boundaries and, and to go and, and be successful. And um, that also transmits the same thing in hockey as a coach. And is to really, I think overall is to have uh, strong relationships and build relationships to, you know, to give people confidence that they, they are worth something in life, no matter where they come from and what they have and that they can also pursue their dreams. And that was my next question. If, if you're hoping to stay involved with the game after you graduate and you always want to have that connection to hockey and then what impact you wanted to have with the sport beyond your playing day? For sure, I would love to stay in the sport and whether that's uh, a few more years of actually playing hockey, but um, definitely after my hockey career would to be a, a coach. Uh, that's one of my big dreams. And um, I think it's very important to be passionate about especially being a hockey coach because in terms of financial situation, it's not the highest paying job, but it's, I think, one of the most rewarding when you do it right and you try and, like I said, build relationships with your teammates, I mean, with your with your team and your, your players and your staff members and trying to all collectively bring as much as you can to the table and work together to be successful. And it might not be winning championships and winning games, but it's being proud of what you've put out there and you've laid out um, and the work you've provided. So I think that's definitely something that I wanna steer towards and, and becoming a great coach and maybe hopefully a big team. Okay, and let's say that you're successful in, in your future endeavors. What's the impact or the imprint that you're gonna have left? What's the one thing that's gonna tell you like, yes, I accomplished my goal and, and the effect that I wanted to have with the group that you just talked about? I think it's just being um, a, a role model. And I hope uh, that in, the, in my career that I'll be able to impact, even if it's just one person, just one person and, and change their lives or give them the tools necessary to, you know, like I said, go pursue their, their dreams. And um, if I know that uh, I have one person in my, you know, in my team or in my classroom that uh, is able to take something away from what I've uh, maybe told them or helped them with, then I know that that's what makes me super happy and that's where I'm gonna be successful. But um, yeah, it's just knowing that somebody might have learned something from me and from my experiences or, or that I have helped them in any, any way. Yeah, it's pretty cool to hear from somebody that you've kind of taken under your wing. You know, they echo the same principles or core values that you have, or they refer to you by a name saying that that's somebody that impacted me, or you end up getting put down as a job reference and you're yeah, getting exactly. the phone call about somebody that you had to mentor and, yeah, you know, exactly. pull through the ranks, right? Exactly. I mean, that's just, that's all about it. And I think that through my experiences in my life, I've gone through so many different schools, hockey teams, soccer teams. Um, just have had so many new friends and met so many new people that I've I've actually been able to build relationships with people that I've never maybe thought that I was going to have a relationship with and whether it's an admissions officer to a, a lacrosse coach to a hockey coach to a, a teacher um, or even just a, a friend that has nothing to do with sports I think that everything everyone who's been put in my path has helped me in some way um, and I really hope to be a person that might help somebody else in their career uh, later on. Yeah, that's great. And so looking at your hockey journey, looking at the success you've had and all these experiences, do you believe that your hockey career and your student athlete experience has really helped shape your future success as well, even after your playing days? And why do you think it's helped shape who you are and how you, how you think things? I think it's just, like I said, the experience that I've had is just meeting new people, building new relationships, 
learning how to cooperate, collaborate, uh, to communicate and actually with different people and be open-minded about uh, everybody else's point of view. And that's super important in our days. I think you need to know how to communicate and voice your opinion, but also be receptive to other people's opinions. And, uh, and that's how I think, you know, good uh, businessmen or good businesswomen, you know, create a business or good coaches create a great hockey team or team in, in general. And um, being open-minded and, and being able to uh, come together also for a, a common goal despite other opinions and views uh, is, is something that I, I hold strongly, uh, is, I'd say I value a lot in my life. And um, so just being able to maybe surround myself with, you know, keep on surrounding myself with great people, which I've been lucky enough to do so until now and uh, keep on doing hopefully so that I can build a great team around me, whether it's for uh, my teaching career, my hockey coach career or, or anything I, I wish to pursue in, in you know my careers. So I've had the, the fortunate privilege of seeing the video clips of yourself playing when you were younger, hearing from your family all about you know, young Kaylee and, and yourself as you've kind of come up through the years. Kaylee now versus Kaylee at 16. Big difference, lots of growth, lots of progression. So how has your mindset changed? How have you evolved in that time? I think I knew when I was 16 years old, I knew I was um, a person who was very outgoing, bubbly, you know, always ready to help, ready to listen to others. And, um, but I didn't know where I could take that to and, and, and how I could maybe help others to a bigger level. But now that I'm 24, that I've gone through so much in that much time and I've had so many different experiences in different cultures with different people, I think that now I have more of a realization that I can really have an impact on people and and that's maybe what I want to pursue in life is to do something with a purpose of helping others and and taking others to a different level in their lives and hopefully helping them you know like I said pursue their their, their dream jobs or, or uh, accomplish great things in their athletics or academics or anything like that so now I think it's just more of using what I am good at to something that is very deeply important to me is to helping others. Connecting passion with purpose, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Couldn't be more <laughs> right yeah. than that. It's a special thing, right? Exactly. So are you the type of person that reflects back and says, hi, ah, you know, I wish I had done this differently or I wish I could have given myself that advice. So yourself, 24 versus Kaylee at 16, do you wish you could go back and tell 16-year-old Kaylee something and be like, this is something you need to know? Or are you somebody that goes, my experiences have shaped me to this point. It's a good thing that it happened and I'm just looking forward. I think that I definitely am a person that I'm really happy to be where I am at right today and, and I would not change any of my experiences for anything else but I do wish that I could go back in time and just tell my younger self that hey if something does doesn't go as planned that it's okay and that there's going to be a solution and uh, because I because of who I am I know that I can find solutions and because of people I have around me uh, I know I'm you know well supported so I think I would be able to just I would like to go back to myself uh, at 16 years old and say, hey, like, relax, calm down, take, <laughs> take a few deep breaths and it will be fine because sometimes I do get overwhelmed and I do maybe not think right, like I don't take my time to think about things and, and then act upon them afterwards. So just to, you know, a younger self, maybe advice would be just to like, it's going to be okay, take a deep breath and there's a solution no matter what. So, but otherwise the experiences are definitely what I'm all about and I'm very happy to be where I am at today. And I think that's something that's very common with hockey players and student athletes is they hear trust the process all the time. It's the most common coach saying ever, yeah. trust the process. <laughs> and a lot of the time it's coach speak and the last thing I think any hockey player has is patience yeah. because you look at the game, it's very fast, right? It's impactful. Mm -hmm. Things happen in a split second. You look at social media, everyone expects things to happen very quick. You exactly. post something, you don't get any likes, and the kids are like, well, do I take it down? Exactly. Right? So everything is so quick in how it happens, so they expect results fast. So sometimes the trust the process statement, it is important, and, and you have to actually believe it, right? Of course, and I think that, you know, it's trust the process, but you also have to know it takes time, and that process does mean time, and um, it's okay if things don't happen overnight, and, and if, even if you go through obstacles in that time, if you really want it and if you really are passionate about something, then it's going to work out um, through hard work and, and just, like I said, also keeping it fun and you have to, you have to enjoy what you're doing. And I think that's super important and people might 
forget about that whole aspect of being so serious and wanting things right away for maybe the wrong reasons as well. You need to know why you're doing things and why you're maybe wanting to become a student athlete, why you want to become a professional hockey player or, you know, a teacher or a coach. So just knowing that you said, you know, connecting passion with purpose and and not getting stressed out that it's not going to happen overnight. And I think, you know, a lot of there's a different examples. It doesn't mean that you're, you know, in an NHL player that you're uh, drafted in the 10th round that you're not going to be anybody. You know, there's proof. Um, and there's so many guys in the NHL who went undrafted or who drafted in the later rounds, but now are making a huge impact for their team. So it's just staying deeply, you know, passionate about what you do and knowing why you're doing it. And like I said, great things happen to great people. So that's, that's about it. Yeah, I, I love that. And I, I think that's something that hockey players have to have to remember in the process is that there will be obstacles, there will be hurdles. But you know, if you have the right mindset, you put in the work, you set goals for yourself, usually good things are going to happen exactly. one way or another. So I love that. Well, let's talk about, you know, your teaching passion, but let's, let's segue a little bit to another dream job of yours. What would that be if, if it doesn't end up being teaching or coaching? What would be a dream job of yours? I think being like a, a mentor to, you know, to different athletes um, would be something that I would be a lot, you know, very interested in. And uh, I know that I can help people. I know that the way I am, I can reach out to a lot of people and a lot of younger or older people feel a connection with me through how I am, how I, how I speak, how I feel about things and how I share my experiences. So I think being a mentor and providing people with help uh, and maybe different tools is something that I'm, I'm very interested in. And I guess also being like a, a public speaker, because I'm not saying that I went through, you know, a war or I've gone through, you know, really horrible events. But I think that in terms of a student athlete and a person coming through different backgrounds and uh, different going through different cultures, I think that my experiences can maybe help a few people in the world and uh, just have, you know, give them perspective and give them the tools that they need maybe to uh, make a next step or th make a decision that might, you know, change the next chapter of their life. So uh, definitely being a mentor and, uh, and a public speaker would be kind of cool. Yeah, and I mean, we've seen everything going on in today's day and age between, you know, the current situation with Ukraine and then COVID. Uh, I think the world needs lots of positive, charismatic people that are sharing the uplifting stories and helping people through those obstacles. So can't, can't really see anybody <laughs> better than that uh, than yourself, right? What are two areas that you've kind of identified as areas of growth, areas you'd like to continue to push forward that you really want to work on and prioritize moving forward? So I think, you know, keeping that, the whole, like, if something isn't going as planned or maybe as I as have I wished, uh, to not get overwhelmed or panicked about it, and to really just take my time to, you know, take a, a few deep breaths, and that's something that I've been working on is taking a few deep breaths before I, you know, go through a thought process or try and find a solution or try and make a decision. Um, and like I said, I've had a, a lot of people help me and, and a lot of support from different areas, family, friends, uh, teammates, coaches. So, I think knowing that you do, that you can take some time when it's not going too well to then try and make the best decision going forward is something that I've matured in and uh, will definitely keep on maturing and developing as I go forward with, with life. And uh, obstacles are inevitable in our world and uh, just trying to stay positive through them too is something that is sometimes tough and easy to say obviously, but tough to do. But um, like I said, it's all about surrounding yourself with good people and. Uh, that's also something that I pr take pride in is, is uh, choosing the right people around me to help me go through things and, uh, you know, staying positive is, is a great one too. So do you believe in the, the statement you're a byproduct of your surroundings? Yeah, I think so. It's a, it's a pretty good, uh, I think, statement and uh, I, do, I do believe in that and that's also something that maybe unconsciously I've had going uh, since I've been younger and uh, I've... You know, I've always been very social and very outgoing and I've made a lot of friends and it's very easy for me to make friends, but the people that are closest to me are the ones that obviously help me the most. And I think that those are the ones that I know that are really there at all times for me. So, uh, yeah. Okay. If you had a simple message or a mission statement that really described who you are and what you believe in, what would that be for you? Oh, this is tough. <laughs> I think that what defines me is, you know, there's a lot of 
a lot of obstacles, a lot of different situations that have arise, uh, that have risen sorry, in in my life. But sticking to it and pushing through because I wanted to and because I was having fun doing so is something that I take pride in, and uh, I never quit. I never back down in front of something that what maybe originally thought was impossible or not fun to do. Um, but yeah, just sticking through it and, and I guess having that grittiness to just keep on pushing forward. And uh, it might not be such a positive time maybe uh, during an obstacle, but I know that when I do uh, surmount that obstacle, then it's going to be a great time. Okay. Uh, Sidetracking entirely, going to something <laughs> that I, and I know you're excited for this question too. So if you could pick three people to have a dinner party with and they have to answer every question that you ask and you get to enjoy that experience, who are those three people for you? Who do you pick? I think I'd have Adele, because I uh, currently am a big fan of her and I always loved her music, but I've uh, watched the documentary about her new uh, album and it, she's just a great person, so chatty, very British, good sense of humor. Um, have you seen the comedy special where she's with James Corden in yes. the vehicle? Yes, yeah. Doing karaoke? Karaoke, I mean oh, just man. absolute like <laughs> laughter. Uh, so I'd have her definitely, I'd have Kevin Hart, find him absolutely hilarious. Okay. Um, this is quite a short vehicle situation yes, you got going short, on. Right? Yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> I'm bringing up the average. <laughs> so uh, Adele, Kevin Hart, and then um, a bit more of a calmer side, but I think that would bring a lot of like knowledge and experience is Roger Federer. I think he's such an unbelievable athlete and what he's accomplished over the years is unbelievable. And uh, coming from Switzerland, you know, I would love to be able to share fondue with him around the table with two funny people, so. Okay, I like that. So you kind of have a blend of everything. You got the comedian who, exactly. his voice in the back seat, I can just picture it. Exactly. He'd be the back seat driver. You got Adele in the front seat who's singing for the entire group. And then Roger's probably just looking just angry in the back that he's dealing with everything that's going deal, on. Deal with the GPS while we're going forward, yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah, that's, that's a good point. No, I like that, I like that. <laughs> One bucket list item that you've never done yet, you really have on the list that needs to be achieved. What would that be for you? Uh, visit to Costa Rica. Now, the whole experience in the jungle, like just hiking, having fun, Costa Rica is like number one on my bucket list. So going there, I think on a longer period of term, so like, you know, like two, three weeks, you know, with a friend or two and, and having a great time over there. That was my next question is if you were going solo, you're taking friends. No, I'm taking friends. Good friends that I used to have a good time with, good laughs, that's for sure. Okay, now I got another question for you. See how, how adventurous and exhilarating you're, you're looking to get with it. Skydiving yeah. or bungee jumping? Which one do you do? Skydiving. Why? I would love to do bungee jumping, don't get me wrong, but I think that just falling out of a plane, I don't I've been in multiple planes of my life and you know more than a lot of people in the past two weeks but um, just being able to like just throw yourself in nothing and literally have nothing that's holding you back for a while uh, just blows my mind and I think that uh, I've already you know experienced people telling me those experiences oh hey like that was insane the adrenaline that I had and uh, I think that's what I would have wanted to do yeah for sure yeah and have you ever seen Will Smith's video talking about skydiving no, I have not. just how the preparation for the jump is the really scary nervous <laughs> part and the exhilaration but then you get into it and you're like wow this Let's is go. this is incredible so it's just about putting yourself in those positions exactly. right where you actually do it and you follow yeah. through and then you, you don't have no choice and someone's just gonna push you over and you're you're done so you gotta it's go good, through it good to know that you would rely on the parachute <laughs> yeah. you know that's what you got more faith in than the than the cord right yeah i mean looking at it that way i don't even know what i would <laughs> trust more but it'd just be like the whole fact of like falling into a load of nothing with actually nothing like attaching me so it's uh huge it's amount quite of trust in the parachute yeah understood